everybody, and welcome back to another Wheel of Time video. Today we're going to hit some of the major news stories of the past few weeks when it comes to the upcoming Wheel of Time television show on Amazon Prime. Now there's certainly some big things that have come out, and we have a lot to get to, so let's jump right in. Before doing so, let me hit the channel's sponsor, Audible.com. Audible is the world's largest supplier of audiobooks. I know most of you have all obviously already read Wheel of Time before, but if you have not listened to the audiobook, it's really, really good. It's an entirely different experience. I wasn't an audiobook person for a long time. I sort of thought I couldn't stay focused. Uh, but lately, it's my go-to for rereads because of all the extra stuff I catch and the fact that Michael Kramer and Kate Redding absolutely kill it and they bring the story to life. You can literally tell every character in the story based on the voice that they use. I think it's crazy. Anyways, you can get a free copy of Eye of the World or whatever book you want just for being a viewer on my channel. Head to www.audibletrial.com forward slash Nablus and sign up for the free trial. You'll get a free audiobook, and if you decide to keep the service, you'll get another book each month for only 15 bucks. If you don't want to keep it, that book that you got for free is yours and you never have to pay a dime. Again, audibletrial.com forward slash Nablus. Check it out. Let's hit a spoiler warning for today's video. Today's video is going to carry a spoiler rating of red, meaning it will have major spoilers, but only through the Great Hunt. If you haven't finished the first two books of the series, go read those, come back, and then watch this video. You have been warned. So we have a number of major announcements that are worth hitting on from the past few weeks. Most of those are casting announcements, but let's start with a couple non-cast related news stories. In my last news video, I reported that the Wheel of Time production was getting ready to start back up and that many of the production team members were heading back to Prague where the show is being filmed. One of the major issues that has come up has been the European Union revoking the travel visas from various countries that are ravaged by the coronavirus, specifically the United States. Since we here in the U.S. have become the worldwide capital for both Karen and Kevin's and Craig's and whatever you want to call them, that think it's their right to jeopardize everyone else because they will fall down dead from wearing a mask when they go to the grocery store, this has made it so we can't travel abroad here in the United States. And in case you didn't all know, we here in the U.S. prefer Facebook scientists over real ones. It's just kind of how we do it here. To that end, there has been a worry that a few members of the production team that reside in the U.S., namely Daniel Henney, Rafe Judkins, Sally Richardson Whitfield, and Sarah Nakamura, would not be allowed to go back to the EU to resume production. Well, WattSeries.com, one of the premier Wheel of Time news websites, has reported that the European Union and the Czech government will be allowing those that are filming projects in the EU to enter the EU. The ban on travel primarily applies to tourists, and this was confirmed when WattSeries.com contacted the Czech Film Commission. So this is positive news. It looks like production will be able to resume, even though Americans can't go watch that production because we're stupid. Thank God the Czech government and people there know how to wear masks and to social distance. Uh, on a complete side note, please wear a mask when you go out. I, for one, would love to have all the quarantining end, and I would like sports to come back, and I want to be able to travel. And until we start listening to Basin Science, that's not going to happen. A second bit of minor news is that the announcement of a few makeup and prosthetic effects people have been announced. Again, credit to WattSeries.com for this information. But Kristen Chalmers has been announced as a hair and makeup designer for the show, and Chris Lyons has been announced as a special effects designer for Teeth. Now, both of them have extensive experience in the industry. Let's take a look at some of their work. Kristen Chalmers has worked on popular movies and TV shows like Outlaw King, Life of Pi, and Black Mirror Bandersnatch. Chris Lyons is the lead designer for a company called Fangs FX that specializes in, you guessed it, teeth. They make teeth for TV shows and movies. They did Freddie Mercury's teeth for their Bohemian Rhapsody, they worked on Game of Thrones and on Carnival Row. I never knew there were special effects designers that worked with teeth, but I guess that makes sense, right? Now, I don't know that either of these are monumental stories in of themselves, but they both appear to have a long track record of good work and working on high profile projects. Now, the biggest chunk of news over the past few weeks has been casting. If you were not aware, the Watt on Prime Twitter handle has been running a read through of the Eye of the World each Wednesday for the community. Now, typically after this completes, they announce a few bits of casting news that correspond with the story that they were reading. Through this, they've announced a number of smaller character roles over the past week and have confirmed a couple of actors and actresses that we already knew were on the show but weren't sure what their specific role would be. So let's get through these casting choices and talk about what it all might mean. So let's start with leaks from a website called Redanian Intelligence. They announced five actors in various roles that had been cast. They kind of had this information leaked. 
Now, they've been right about some stuff in the past. They've also been wrong about some stuff in the past. So I kind of took it with a grain of salt. But it appears three of these roles have been later confirmed by Amazon. Uh, two of them are still out in limbo, but we'll talk about those in a second. But the fact that some of these were confirmed lends a bit of credibility to the leak. So let's first hit on the ones that were confirmed. First, we have Darren Clark cast in the role of Basil Gill, the innkeeper from The Queen's Blessing in Camelin. Darren is an actor from the UK with extensive work in television, playing many different roles, dating all the way back to 1998. He certainly has the look for Basil Gill, and it certainly seems like that we can trust him uh, because he's not, well, you know, skinny. This hire was confirmed by Amazon roughly two weeks after the leak, so we do have our Basil Gill for good. Second, we have Azuka Hoyle as a character called Dana. Now, Azuka Hoyle is an actress known for her work on Mary Queen of Scots and a number of other TV shows dating all the way back to 2018. This casting was also confirmed by Amazon, so that leaves us with another question. Who the heck is Dana? There isn't a character in the series that we know about named Dana, and the closest that we probably know of is Dina, who is Tom Marilyn's assistant, but that seems like an odd hire for this point in the story unless they decided to just add her in a whole lot sooner. The third leaked casting that ended up being confirmed was that of Jennifer Preston as Mrs. Grinwell from the short part of the story where Matt and Rand stop at the Grinwell farm on their way to Camelin. We were also given Pasha Bokery as Master Grinwell by Amazon when they officially announced Jennifer Preston. Now, we had previously known that Pasha would be involved, but not at what capacity. Jennifer Preston is a British actress best known for a number of movie roles and television roles. Again, none of them major. Pasha has been in a number of television roles as well. Now, neither of these are major parts in the books, so really, they only see page time in one chapter. But it seems like that part of the story is obviously going to make it into the series. And they're going to get enough screen time to warrant making an announcement for their casting choice. So they're not just glorified extras. Now, Amazon also released their casting along with the casting of the previously mentioned Azuka Hoyle uh, as Dana. So does that mean that Dana is either a new name or a code name for Elsa Grinwell? Elsa doesn't play a big role in the story either, so this could be like a combination of characters or somebody new entirely. The other two leaked actors and actresses by Redanian Intelligence were Kira Chasna as a young Swan Sanche and Phil Snowden as a character named Steve. So let's start with the less Mimi casting uh, in Kira Chansa being cast in the role as a younger version of Swan Sanche. Kira Chanson is an 11-year-old British actress with a few roles to her name, including a stage musical. Now, from what I can tell, she seems to be a very promising up-and-coming actress. The weird part here is that we never really see Swan Sanche at the age of 11 <laughs> or around that in the books. So it seems odd that we'd get significant time uh, then. But maybe this is a flashback to her youth in Tear, or maybe this is an early time in the Tower. Certainly an interesting casting, and I'm hoping we get some more information about this to figure out kind of why they did it. Now that brings us to the casting of Phil Snowden as Steve. Obviously, we're hoping at least uh, that this is not a character within the television show named Steve. And obviously, there is not a character named Steve in the books. So... This is likely a code word for the role that they were doing during casting. We do not have official confirmation from Amazon that Phil Snowden has been cast or that someone named Steve is in the show. Phil Snowden is a British actor that hasn't had a ton of major roles, but he has been active in the business for a while. I know there's been a bunch of wild speculation as to who he might be, so I've linked a showreel of his that I found that should give you a bit of insight into his style. I would say if I had to guess as to who Steve will be based on that showreel, I could narrow it down to two roles. One, Bail Doman, the captain of the spray. I think that he certainly can give off the sea captain vibe and the pirate feel that you get from Ilianers. Additionally, he has a menacing, almost crazy look sometimes. And despite his disheveled appearance in a lot of this, in that showreel at least, I think he would make a great Ishamayel as well. Now keep in mind, Ishamayel becomes a much bigger character later on after some changes. We'll leave it at that for the sake of spoilers. But I would say that it's possible that he could become the original incarnation of Ishamayel. Now, if I had to pick between the two, though, my guess is Bail Doman. Now, moving on, we had even more casting announced by Amazon. And I have to say, it's fun to talk about actual confirmed roles rather than leaks. We got confirmation that Abdul Salis would be playing Eamon Volda and Stuart Graham would be playing Jeffrey Bornholt. We had previously had word that Valda would not only be in the first season, but also that he would be played by Abdul Salas. So this is just confirmation of that. Abdul Salas is a British actor best known for his role as Curtis Cooper on the long-running medical drama in the UK, Casualty. He's a fairly well-known actor and certainly will do a good job in this role. Stuart Graham has had a long and very distinguished career in film and in television. 
Uh, his acting career dates back all the way back to 1992. What I find interesting here is that Eamon Valda will be introduced this early in the story. I can imagine that he's serving as maybe the second in command of Jeff from Bornhold. And that introducing him now just makes him a bigger part of the story later. And they kind of want to set him up as a secondary villain throughout the story, which I think makes some narrative sense. Lastly, on the casting front, just this past week, we got some big final confirmations on a number of actors that we knew were in the story, but we weren't sure what roles they'd be playing. And I'm, of course, referring to Maria Doyle Kennedy and Daryl McCormick. We had heard Daryl McCormick would be playing a role in the story months back. And that began some speculation as to whether he'd be a white cloak, if he'd be Gawain or Galad. Speculation was all over the place. Well, just the other day, it was confirmed by Amazon that Daryl McCormick would be playing Aram, the Tinker. He had been hinting at it on social media for a little while now, but now it is official. So Daryl has been on a number of television shows, most specifically Peaky Blinders, Vikings, and a show called Neon. He's going to do fine. He doesn't have extensive work, but I think he'll do great as Aram. Maria Doyle Kennedy has been connected to the Wheel of Time for some time now, with much of the speculation being that she'd either be Swan Sanche, she'd be Varen, or she'd be Elida. Now, I had thought she was a little bit more of a Varen type, just from seeing her other work, but I think just about everybody was wrong with this casting. Rather than playing an Aes Sedai, Maria Doyle Kennedy will be playing the role of Ilya, uh, Aram's grandmother and leader of the Tinker Group, or I should say co-leader of the Tinker Group, that Perrin and Egwene encounter in the Eye of the World. Maria Doyle Kennedy is a fairly successful television actress with starring roles in Outlander, The Tudors, and Downton Abbey. Now, of course, she is the co-leader of the Tinkers because her husband, Rayan, leads the group, and he also has been cast. Narinder Samra has been cast in the role of Rain, who is Aram's grandfather. Now, Narinder has extensive experience both acting on television and in movies with experience on shows like ER, EastEnders, and movie credits for roles in The One and Christopher Robin. What I find significant about all of this is the fact that the casting of at least somewhat known actors and actresses as Tinkers, that tells us a few things. First of all, the most obvious is that the Tinkers are not going to be cut from the story of the Eye of the World. Most of us have been looking for areas or scenes that we think might be cut from the story, and so far, there doesn't seem like much, if anything, that has been cut. We're getting White Cloaks, we're getting Tinkers, we're getting Camelin, we're getting running from two rivers. I mean, it's all there so far. The second thing that I find to be important about these casting announcements in regards to the Tinkers, at least, is that spending time to announce their casting, I think that they're going to get a decent amount of screen time. Obviously, we know that they make an appearance in the story later on as well, so maybe they're setting these characters up for larger roles later on, but it is really cool that we're going to get bigger name people to play these characters. My overall thoughts on the casting in general is pretty basic because we just really don't know a lot, but based on the casting of the Grinwells, the White Cloaks, like Bornhold and Valda, the Tinkers, the Innkeepers and Camelin, I, I think very little so far has been cut from the show. In fact, if anything, I think the casting choices of a young Swan Sanche and characters we don't know of, like Steve and Dana, seem to indicate more that they are adding content, not removing it. Now, we know this likely isn't going to be completely the case, but I think we are in the dark about what's going to be cut and what might not be cut from the story. It's just leaning a lot like they're not cutting a lot. I think the questions that we still need to have answered pertain to Min, whether Berlon makes it into the story, and what happens after the party gets to Camelin. Also, what are some of the major changes going to be? We know they're coming, we just don't know what they are. I am super excited to find out what. So what do you all think of the casting news? What are you most anticipating to find out about the show? And do you think that we're due for some major, major casting announcement soon? Please let me know what you think in the comments below. Again, remember to check out the Audible link and get your free audiobook. And obviously check out shopwheeloftime.com to get all of your Wheel of Time related merch and check out my Patreon if you'd like to support the channel and thegreatbite.com. It's the new Wheel of Time website that we've been building. All patrons are going to be displayed on the site so everybody's going to, you know, know that you're supporting or at least you're going to get honored for it. Make sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel to get updates when I release new Wheel of Time content, and click the bell icon to get notifications when that comes out. And obviously, when you make a comment on the video, it really helps promote it. So I appreciate that. Thanks all of you for watching. And until next time, peace out. Tinker in the kitchen with a job of work to do. My mistress up above, slipping on a robe of blue. She prances down the staircase, a fancy us a free crying. Tinker, oh dear, Tinker, won't you mend a pot for me?